Hello, in today's video, I'm gonna be doing a GPS return to home showdown. So I'm putting six drones up against each other, three from DJI, three sort of FPV drones. I'm gonna see which does the best. Now, DJI has a reputation for really good return to home, but it's looking very good. But is the other FPV stuff now starting to catch up with Beta Flight 4.5? Oh, well today, we're gonna to find out. So how is this gonna work? Well, each drone is gonna be scored in two separate categories. The first one is gonna be how long it takes to actually get a GPS fix. And then the second one is gonna be the distance it lands away from its original takeoff point. So basically, it's gonna be scored from zero to infinity. So a lower score here is better. So a lower time in seconds to get a fix and a lower distance away from the home point. So to keep things fair, what I've actually done here is I've put an X on the ground. And this is gonna make sure that every single drone takes off from exactly the same point. Now, before I go any further, I need this hat. It is literally 9.30 a.m. today, and it's already 31 degrees, and my weather app says it feels like it's 38 degrees, and I would agree with it. It's bloody hot. So basically, the drones are going to be judged on how close they return back to the X. I'm going to place the center of the drone on the center of that X, and then when they make their way back, I'm going to measure how far away they are using this. Now, this is a 30 centimeter ruler, so I'm anticipating they're going to be fairly accurate, because if they're further than 30 centimeters away, I'm gonna have a bit of fun. <laughs> the first drone going up today is gonna to be the DJI Mini 4 Pro. This is by far the best mini drone that DJI has ever made. But how accurate is its return to home? Let's find out. Okay, so the first test, how long does it take to get a GPS fix? So I'm gonna start the timer from the second that I turn this drone on, and then that's gonna generate its score. So let's find out, let's turn it on and start. I'm gonna leave it exactly where it is. It's placed perfectly in the middle of that X. Let's go see how long it takes to get a fix. So to keep things fair, I haven't turned any of these drones on uh, either today or yesterday, just to make sure they're starting from scratch, trying to find those GPSs. And there we go. Home point updated, GPS was just found and that took 51 seconds. Okay, let's, uh, let's send it up and let's see how it does. Okay, so some of the more modern DJI drones have something called precision landing. And what that means is basically when you take off, first thing you need to do is ascend the drone to at least seven meters in altitude before moving either forwards, backwards, left or right. And that allows the drone to more accurately pinpoint where it's supposed to land when it comes back to home. So we're gonna take it off. We're gonna fly up to at least seven meters. So we're up. We're gonna fly up nice and slowly till we get to around seven meters. Okay, so we've hit 10 meters. That should be plenty for it to have got that position, uh, precision landing. So I'm now gonna fly it away and we're gonna do the return to home test. Return to home. Okay, I've just activated return to home. We're gonna move closer in. See, I'm pretty sure this mini is gonna be fairly accurate, so I'll leave the camera there for this one. It is just about overhead. Let's see how it does. Oh my God, it's looking very good. There is no way. Okay. <laughs> that was way more accurate than I expected it to be. All right, let's do the quick measurement. From the center of the drone to the center of the square, nine centimeters that is a, that's a crazy score i'm not sure if anything's going to beat this but let's find out next we're going to move up to the dji air series the mini 4 pro put in an impressive performance scoring 51 seconds and nine centimeters for a total score of 60. a strong start but will it be enough to maintain the top spot okay next up we're moving up in size we're going to the dji air series and fighting for that is the dji air 3. let's see how long it takes to get a satellite lock Okay, powering on the Air 3 in 3, 2, 1. Start the timer. Get the controller so we can see when it's got the lock. Now the bigger drone should be able to pick up satellites quicker. It should have a bigger GPS module on board. And we're already seeing that's way quicker up to 13 satellites. Where's it gonna get lock? There, GPS lock at 32 <laughs> seconds. That's quite a bit quicker than the Mini. Okay, let's send it up. Okay, same thing again. We're gonna let it climb up to at least seven meters before we, um, before we move, so we're climbing up. Straight up, we haven't moved. Seven, we're gonna keep going up to 10. Okie dokie, right, let's fly away. And then we'll do return to home. Okay, that should do. Return to home is being activated now. Okay, let's move in closer. Here we go again, it's looking good. Is it gonna be as close as the mini? <laughs> Here we go, moment of truth. It's looking very close. There is no way. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get the measurement stick. I mean, you can see from the screen as good as I can, this is ridiculously close. So from the center, we have a total distance four centimeters. Four centimeters away from the home point. That bigger GPS module on board 
definitely came in handy. Let's move on to the Avata series. The Air 3 comes in with scores of 32 and 4, giving it a total of 36 and knocking the Mini 4 Pro off the top. This is going to be a tough score to beat. If you have a drone like the Mini 4 Pro or the Air 3 and you want to know how to take your footage from where it is now to the next level, then you can enroll in my advanced drone videography course, which will take you from where you are now to a cinematic genius. It's got 15 modules, jam-packed full of information and value, and it's literally already completely transforming people's footage. And I know that it's gonna do exactly the same for you. So I'll leave a link in the description so you can go and check that out. And also on the same sort of thing, I'm also in the processes of developing a cinematic FPV course. Now, if that's something that you would be interested in, you can sign up to the waitlist down below to get notified on the updates with the course. And it's also gonna let me know how many people are interested so I can get started and get this thing produced for you. Thank you so much for that. Links to everything are gonna be in the description. And let's get back to the video. Next up, we have the DJI Avata 2. Now, this is a more FPV focused product. So because of that, did they skimp out a little bit on the GPS? Let's find out. Okay, powering on the Avata 2 in three, two, one, start the clock. It's gonna be a little bit harder to see, but we can still do it. 30 seconds in, zero satellites locked. Oh, now they're jumping up. 10, there we go, satellites locked. Total time, 57 seconds. A Little bit slower than the Mini 4 Pro. Let's see how it does when it comes to precision landing back at the home point. I'm not sure if the Avata 2 has the same precision landing system, but we'll give it the benefit of the doubt. We'll take it off and ascend it to at least seven meters before moving. And we'll see how it does. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, let's move off and then we'll activate return to home. Activating return to home. Okay, she's coming back. All right, let's move in a bit closer. Okay, we're almost back. This is looking quite a bit further off than the mini in the air. I think I need a bigger ruler. I'm not even sure if it's gonna be in the frame, uh, let me just move the camera quickly so you can see that he is not quite where he should be. <laughs> oh, this is going to be a pain to measure. Okay, let me get the measuring stick and let's start measuring. So we have 30, 60, 90 centimeters, 120, 150, 100 and 78 centimeters. That is a lot further away than I expected it, to be honest. But we'll tally up on the scoreboard and see how it's doing. Maybe they did skimp a little on the GPS. With scores of 57 and 178, the Avata 2 gets a total of 235, putting it in last place. But something tells me it's not gonna stay there for oh! long. Okay, so that was the three DJI drones. We're now moving on to the more custom FPV side of things. This is an iFlight Nazgul Evoke. It's a five inch drone. And this has got an M8 GPS on the back. Now there is an M10 GPS, which is a newer version, but well, this one has the M8. So for all those nerds out there, there you go. Now this is running Beta Flight 4.5, which had significant improvements to the GPS rescue. So we're gonna see how this one does. One thing to mention here is all of my Beta Flight drones are set up to have eight satellites as a lock. So they all have to get to the same minimum sats milestone and eight sats is just a number that I've always used. Okay, so before I power this one on, Beta Flight GPS rescue is notorious for being not so great so i'm gonna move the camera back just a little bit just so that we can give this guy a little bit more space to play with let's plug him in and see how long it takes okay i'm gonna plug this in now and start the timer the second i plug it in three two one okay timer's going let's have a look now this one is using the iFlight uh gps unit i have another drone later which is using a matek unit we'll see what happens 30 seconds in, zero satellites acquired. <laughs> this might take a little while. On 03, there we go. Back to zero, up to seven. There we go, GPS lock, and that took 51 seconds. Okay, that's interesting. Now, I do think this GPS unit is maybe a bit on its last legs. It does, I don't know, it does some weird things from time to time, but let's see how it does on the return to home test. Okay, no precision landing here, so we're just gonna send it up, send it over there, and activate GPS rescue. So we're taking off. And that should set the home location. I'm going to give it three or four seconds just so it can accurately set it. And now let's take off. Okay, we're up, we're going. Now I've moved a lot of stuff out of the way just to give this guy a bit of space. Let's take it up ever so slightly to around here. Okay, activating GPS rescue now. Rescue is activated. It's just give me saying rescue not available. 
but it appears to be making its way back home, so we'll keep going. Maintain altitude. Okay, we're coming back. It's looking pretty good. I'm gonna hold my hand over the cancel just in case. Okay, we're gonna go handheld and see where we go. Okay, it looks like it's a little bit off here. Oh my God, I might have to cancel it completely. No, we might be okay. We might be okay. Okay, we're gonna be okay. We're freaking, we're miles away from the thing though. Ah, oh, I'm gonna need a bigger stick. <laughs> How far away is that? <laughs> Let's measure it. Oh my God. Oh my God, this is gonna take forever. 30, 60. Whilst I measure this gigantic distance, let me tell you about something really cool. If you're enjoying this video so far, you're also going to enjoy my free weekly newsletter where I give you the latest drone news, hot tips, and a little bit of a behind the scenes look into what's going on in my life. So get to stay up to date with all the latest drone releases, drone developments, and you'll also get a bit of a sneak peek into what's coming up potentially in future videos. It's completely free to sign up. I'll leave a link in the description so you can go and check it out. Thank you so much, and let's get back to the video. 947 centimeters, so 9.5 meters. <sighs> I am sweating now. The first of the dedicated FPV drones got off to a good start with 51 seconds to acquire a GPS lock, but it then landed over 9 meters away, giving it a total score of 998. And with that, it moves straight into last place. Okay, so next up we have this. This is the iFlight Nazgul 6. Now this is a partial custom build of mine. And this is running a Matek M8 GPS, so still an M8, not an M10, but it's a different brand of GPS. And uh, let's see how this one does. Now, I did do a GPS rescue test with this the other day, and it was very impressive. Let's see if it can do a similar thing today. Okay, plug it in in three, two, one, start the timer. Okay, let's see how she does. 30 seconds in, zero sats again. Can it beat the five inch? And lock, there we go. One minute and 12 seconds, that's the longest so far. So as long as it doesn't land like 10 miles away from the takeoff point, it should have a chance of beating the five inch. Getting a pretty hot core temperature going on here. So let's get it moving around and get this quad cooled down a little bit. Looks like I'm not the only one that's been baking in the sun. <laughs> okay, activating GPS rescue now. Rescue is activated. Here we go, it's coming down. Oh, that was a bit of an impact. <laughs> Okay, well, that was a heavier landing than we would like to expect. She's upside down. <laughs> Luckily, quads like this are designed to take a little bit of a beating. So it should be okay. Now, let's measure how far away that was. I did just flip it over, but I left it in the same place. So let's get the measuring stick out. <laughs> 560. 560 centimeters, so 5.6 meters. It beats the other one by about four meters. Now I did test this over there, like I said, and it landed only about two meters away from the uh, launch point. But yeah, that's the variability that you get with the beta flight rescue system. Even though the six inch took the longest so far at 72 seconds to get a GPS lock, it landed 560 centimeters away, giving it a total of 632, and also meaning it avoids going into last place. It's time for the last one, and I think I probably saved the best to last. Why? Because this thing is a drone I haven't flown in a little while. Last night, I just finished putting it back together. I had a little bit of work I was doing on it, and I haven't even test flown it since. So I'm going to do a bit of a check fly, and then we're going to see how it does on the GPS return to home side of things. Now, I forgot to mention the previous uh, six inch Nazgul was also running uh, Beta Flight 4.5. This is running Beta Flight 4.4, so not quite as refined, and we'll see if that makes a difference with the return to home. I'm actually really interested to see how this thing does, so let's get it up in the sky. This is how hot it is. Can you see I'm literally sweating the sun cream back out of my skin? What's the point of wearing sun cream if it just sweats back out your skin? <laughs> okay, got a bit of a blast from the past with this one. Got the old DJI goggles two out. Let's plug it in and start the timer. Three, two, one. Go on, get all the way in. Okay, timer's going. Let's have a look. Now, hopefully I do get a video signal from this means I'll put it back together correctly. Hey, there we go. Okay, 30 seconds in, zero sats. Now I should mention this Cinelog 35 has an M10 GPS. Now M10 is the sort of newer, more modern uh, system that GPS can basically run on. It's supposed to be faster, lock more satellites. So this should, in theory, pick up satellites quicker than my other ones. 
However, my other ones do have shielded GPS cables where this one doesn't, like I shielded them myself. Anyway, let's have a check, where are we? Oh, and lock. Okay, ooh, 59, 59, so a total of 60 seconds. That's actually, yeah, I mean, that's all right. That's what it did. <laughs> anyway, let's send it up and see how accurate it is coming back and see if it actually works first. Armed, and we're up. Okay, well, at least we're flying. Check our signal strength. Okay, everything is looking pretty good. 28 sats, which is mental for something like this. Okay, gonna activate GPS rescue now. Okay, rescue is activated, it's coming back. I'm really, really interested to see how this does. Where is it going? Don't go to the water. <laughs> okay, it's making its way back. It's heading in the right direction. Whoa, it's nowhere near as smooth as this one. Look at it twitching out, you see? Made of like 4.4 there. Oh my God, I have no, how is this going to land? Okay, I'm gonna get ready to kill it if needs be. I'm gonna go handheld. It's actually looking like it's doing pretty good. This could be impressive. Okay, it's drifting away a little bit. Oh, it's pretty good though. Wow, <laughs> that is pretty darn good. Now for context, when I did the test the other day with the F6, that is also pretty much where it landed. So this is impressive. Let me get the measuring stick out and see exactly how it did. I can't find the measuring stick. Why did I bring a translucent ruler out to the field? What is wrong with me? Aha, gotcha, okay. Okay, let's measure him up. 270 centimeters, so 2.7 meters. Pretty good, to be honest, pretty good. That's a little bit of help coming in there from that M10 GPS being a little bit more accurate than those previous M8s. Now, like I said before, I've done tests with those and they were more accurate than they were today. But hey, there's a bit of variability in it. So that was this. Let's have a look at the total overall standings. The Synalog 35 comes in with an impressive score of 60 and 270, giving it a total score of 330, putting it in the top spot for the FPV focus drones and just behind the Avata 2. So in first place, we have the Air 3 with an astounding score of 36, then the Mini 4 Pro, the Avata 2, the Synalog, the 6 inch, and then in last place, the 5 inch with a total of 998 points. So was that the result you're expecting? Well, to be honest, it was a result that I was kind of expecting. I did expect the beta flight 4.5 course to do a little bit better but hey they did what they did if you enjoyed this video you're also going to really enjoy watching this video right here and if that one doesn't speak to you then go and check out this one instead thank you so much for watching subscribe for more content like this and i will see you in the next one bye bye <laughs>